Oh, hey guys. So I understand that you want to learn how to create some lipstick art, do you? Well, I am here to give you my first ever tutorial as to how I create art with 100% lipstick and my kiss prints. So stay tuned and watch and see how the magic is made. fitting because we're creating it with our lips and um, let's go ahead and dive right in. So this is the canvas that I'm going to be working on. Now I like to work on, it's called clay board. Do you hear this? This isn't canvas. It's actually wood panel that it's been primed and it's super soft and smooth to work with. Now I used to work on canvas but I found that that's really abrasive and after a while it starts to hurt the tip of your nose and your chin and it's just not as fun to work with. So this is called clay board. It's super soft. It's already primed. You pay a little bit extra for it, but it's worth it if you want to actually try and create this type of artwork. I have already sketched out the drawing on there. So if you see up close, you can see I have already started my sketch and I'm going to create sort of think paint by numbers. So I know that this area is going to be, let me see if I can do this. I can't write backwards. Okay, so this area is gonna be your red. So I'm just gonna put an R there because I know that that's gonna be my straight up red color. These areas over here, when I look at my picture, I see that they're shaded. So I'm gonna do B for burgundy because I'm gonna wanna have more burgundy in these areas. These areas right here with the squiggly lines, that's like the glossy part of the lip, so I'm gonna keep that white. And when it's white, I don't write anything in there. Uh, next, up here, like in the opening of the mouth, inside the mouth, it's very dark, and then it fades to a lighter pink where her tongue is. So in those areas, I'm gonna put B for burgundy. And I'm gonna put P here for pink because I know that it gets lighter down here. And then kind of anywhere in between, I'm gonna put an R for red. And that means that I'm gonna be blending my burgundy with my red with my pink. Hopefully you guys can see these letters okay. The teeth are gonna stay white, but I might add some shadow in there just so they don't look too flat. And then as far as the top lip goes, that's gonna be R for red. And as it dips down to her teeth, we start to catch some shadow. So that's gonna be B for burgundy. And I'll show you guys how I go ahead and blend all of these colors as well. Now we're going to be working with three different shades of lipstick. So I've got sort of a corally pink. These are all by Isihan. It's a Japanese cosmetic company. I've got like your basic fire engine red. And then I've got a nice burgundy. So this is gonna be like a nice monochromatic painting. All right, so we're all set up and we're ready to go. We're basically just going to start and dive right in. So I just, I think I like to personally start with like the beef of it, which is going to be the red. So the regular red is what we're going to do. So that's this like fire and Ginny red color that we're going to do. If you have any current lipstick on, you got to wipe that off first. You don't want that messing with it. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and apply. So here we go. All right. And I'm gonna start kissing in all the areas where it says it indicates that it's red. So let's go. Okay, so I've got my first top line here. Now, you might get smudgy with lipstick and that happens. It's all part of the process, guys. It's not always glamorous. All right, so I've got my first row of red up here. I'm gonna try and get off any axis that I can and kind of dip down into my area where it says burgundy because I'm gonna end up blending my burgundy with my red. So I'm gonna kind of get the rest of this off and start to fade down into the burgundy just so the two colors can blend better. All right, so don't worry about the edges because we're gonna clean those up with a secret weapon that I have. And you've gotta stay, stay tuned for the secret weapon because, because a lot of people ask me about this. How do I get my lines so crisp? I'm gonna show you that in just a second. But first I'm going to do this next line of burgundy.
it's gonna look really sloppy as you're going along because you're gonna get outside of your lines a lot, you're gonna get like marks from where your nose hits it, things like that. So it doesn't always stay perfectly clean. So I'm gonna show you right now my secret tool that I use for erasing. Now, if anybody has kids like I do and they draw on the walls with crayons or, you know, wipe their boogers on the walls or what have you, I use Mr. Clean Magic Erasers in my house and I use it in my art. So I'm gonna show you that this weapon will take away anything. So I've got my eraser and I just tear off like little chunks like that. And then I go in and I don't know if you can see this. Let me try and get you a little bit closer. They work really well on this clay board dry. Um, they also work really well if you get them a little bit wet. I like to work with them dry on clay board just so I don't get, um, you know, smears or streaks or anything like that in my artwork. And it seems to work pretty well. So I just kind of go in and this is how I refine my lines. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go do the burgundy, the red, the pink, go back to the red and fill in the burgundy really quick. And then I'm gonna show you how I blend and tweak my edges. All right, so here goes. Refine those lines and make sure that our teeth are present the way that we want them to be. Because right now they're hidden behind some of the kiss prints and we want those things to pop out a little bit more. I use just makeup brushes and there I got all kinds of different tips. I think these are all just acrylic brushes, but you can get them in any type of, as long as it's a nice, soft, fine hair. You don't wanna use like oil painting brushes, like watercolor brushes work well and acrylic painting brushes work well. Something with soft bristles so it doesn't scratch away at the lipstick pigment. And then I kinda just go in and I start doing like circular motions like this to help blend my lipsticks a little bit better because in some areas, the edges of your lip line when you make your kiss print doesn't really work in your favor. So it's nice to just blend those so you have a softer transition. So the other thing that I do is that I don't always use my lips. I also draw and paint directly with the lipstick too. That will really help give you a deep, dark areas because sometimes your kiss print just can't translate the lipstick dark enough you can I mean you can you have to kiss in the same spot over and over and over again um, to try and build up your color but sometimes especially around areas like around the teeth here and the edges of the lips sometimes you just have to draw it in to be able to really help to find those edges so I'm gonna do that right now I'm gonna actually gonna take my my red red here and I'm just gonna lightly define where I want the edge of her lip to be just to give myself a cleaner line. And when you work with clay board, it kind of absorbs the um, lipstick pigment pretty fast. So you don't wanna leave this here too long before you blend. It's important that you try and start blending it sooner than later. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my brush. And this is, again, just like a nice soft tip brush it's actually an eyeshadow brush but you can use acrylic or watercolor brushes as well you want it a little bit stiff so it'll manipulate and move the pigment but not too soft that it's um you know not going to move it around at all and i kind of just dab and blend and this will help give me a more defined and so i dab it and then i blend it with my current lipstick kiss prints and you see how that makes a nice soft transition And one thing about mixing your lipstick, and this is actually something I should have brought up earlier, is the type of lipstick you use. Now, if you use a matte lipstick, let's say, 
those dry really fast. Um, especially, and they also don't kiss on well because a lot of the matte ones are like the 24 hour wear types of lipsticks. The kinds that seem to work best or in your, more in your favor would be the creamier lipsticks. So the ones that have more of a gloss like shine to them, those really spread well and they come off on the canvas a little bit easier. Okay, as I start to wrap up this piece, I'm just gonna get a little bit closer for you um, or put the camera a little bit closer for you guys so you can kind of really see what's going on in here. So as you can see, there's still a lot of areas that need to be um, tweaked and cleaned up. Right now I'm using my Mr. Clean Magic Eraser to put that shine in her lips to add a little bit of gloss. You really need these, these uh, highlights and lowlights to be able to give the piece a lifelike quality and to build depth in your picture. This is a good one to blend some colors. It's really nice and soft, so it won't move the um, existing pigment down too much. So I'm going to use this brush and I'm just gonna paint directly on my brush. And then I'm gonna just kind of keep working down here to build up those shadows that I want. So for the sake of this video, and so it's not the longest video on YouTube, I went ahead and just like fast forwarded and I kept doing the stuff that I've been showing you as far as the blending with the paintbrush and drawing directly and using my magic eraser to be able to um, beef up this piece. Now the last thing that I want to do is I just want to go over some areas with some extra kiss prints so when you get close you can actually see the kiss prints because they're so blended right now. And then we're probably just going to add a little bit of shadows with the soft pink and then we're pretty much done. So I'm going to go ahead and do my layer of kiss prints right now. All right, so now I'm just gonna dust in a little bit of this corally pink around the edges to create some shadows. And I'd say this painting is pretty much about a wrap. So I'm just gonna dab it in the corners here to kind of just get the stuff going. I want the super duper light. So I'm just gonna barely dab it. I'm gonna wipe off my brush just with a paper towel is fine just to kind of get most of it out. And then I'm just gonna start to blend this in circular motions. And that's a little bit dark, so I'm gonna use my magic eraser and I'm gonna lighten it up even farther. Yeah, you probably can't even see that, but um, it's super light. I just want it like a nice light blush, kind of 
kind of tone. Okay, I'd say that this piece is just about finished. So I'm really happy with it. I think my client's gonna be really happy with it. Okay, so I'm just seeing a couple little other details I'd like to add in here. I'm gonna add a little bit more creases in the lips here. I'm just gonna do this by hand just to make it a little more realistic. I like realistic art. So the more I can get this looking more lifelike, the happier I am with it. Okay, so I added in some shadows and I went ahead and I went around with my eraser and gave it more highlights and I also went in with my paintbrush to add some more creases into the lips and I think it's really come to life now. So I hope this tutorial made some sense for you guys and whether you're watching it to actually learn how to do lipstick art or you're just watching it because you're curious of how I do it, uh, hopefully there was some takeaway from it. If you do actually try this, I would love to see what you create. So please send it my way. You can tag me on Instagram at lipstick underscore Lex or you can email me at lex at lipsticklex.com. Um, but yes, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm always trying to put out new and interesting content for you guys. And uh, yeah, don't forget to give me that thumbs up. Be a pal. And as always, spread the love, guys. Love you and I'll see you next time.